The Western Cape is one of South Africa's adventure treasure troves, with the Cape cycle routes being perfectly poised to plunge you right into the heart of it. Their 750 km cross-Cape route is regarded as the mother of all routes, or as some may identify more strongly with, the mother-in-law. And it starts right here, in Plettenberg Bay. Over the next five days, we are here to experience the best that this route has to offer, not just on the bike, but off the bike as well. We're looking forward to experiencing the hospitality of the towns along the way, ride quad bikes, and do all sorts of other adventurous activities. Strangely enough, you will be expecting us to jump on our bikes now and ride away. We're gonna kick off this journey kayaking. Oh wow, you bring your bodies, bro. I did, but I didn't bring my suntan. It's the middle of winter. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful day, let's get after it. Yeah. The Bitto River meanders its way to the sea on the outskirts of Plettenberg Bay on its northern side. This small river system is a sanctuary to an abundance of bird life and fish species which allowed us to immerse ourselves into the flow of our journey from the very first paddle stroke. Having spent a lot of time in kayaks over the years, putting paddles into the water was a welcome and familiar sensation for Jason and I, which incited the usual antics. What exploring is all about. If you don't go, you don't know. You'll never know. <laughs> Swinging our legs over our bikes, our cycling journey would begin with a ride to and through the indigenous Deepfella forests, our riding highlight for the day. Within the first few kilometers, we were greeted by wide open fast gravel roads, the perfect way to get our legs warmed up and our minds into cycling mode. The deep fodder forests and surrounding areas are packed with all sorts of adventurous activities. The three elephant trails are very popular for trail running and hiking. Not surprising when you're embraced by seemingly endless indigenous vegetation, elusive wildlife and winding gravel roads that dip and climb in and out of the valleys. It is a natural playground to explore and immerse yourself in. As much as we would have liked to spend more time in the area, our day was coming to a close and with the delicious oysters of 34 South Calling, we plunged our way down the infamous Samola Hill into Nisna, the home of the Nisna Oyster Festival. Bit of a tight schedule after cruising all the way in from Cape Town today but we snuck into the waterfront in twilight gonna grab a few oysters because it is the oyster festival of course and then uh, get cozy at the Nasna Hollow. Yep. The 10 day oyster festival is a highlight experience in the Western Cape with a plethora of activities from art and cultural experiences to sports events and fantastic cuisine it comes as no surprise that Nasna is the place to be for your midwinter breakaway. With our oyster starter holding off the hunger pains just enough and a busy day now behind us, a hearty dinner and a good night's rest was in order. We found exactly that at the tranquil Nisner Hollow and its cozy social eatery restaurant. This bike friendly stay offers incredible value for money with their service and hospitality being world class. See this is what I'm concerned about, you know, we're starting off the day and you're supposed to be fueling your body with relatively uncomplicated food so you can get the miles in and you don't cramp and all that kind of we're gonna ride the seven passes around today j-dog's fueling with salami blue cheese and croissants i'm a little bit nervous to be riding behind him and i'm more nervous because i don't have the speed to get past him and ride ahead don't forget the beans <laughs> and beans <laughs> tickets i think i'm done 
But what would a trip of this nature be without second breakfast? Ile de Pain is a buzzing cafe-style restaurant surrounded by the picturesque Neisner Lagoon. Their creative patisserie is testimony to their belief that life is endlessly delicious, abundant and full of tastes to share, savor and celebrate. What are you guys looking forward to today? Mm. So much. Looking forward to this croissant, but mm. sadly it's come to an end quite quickly. Unlike the Seven Passes Road, I believe. Strangely enough though, I am looking forward to riding it. Because it's, uh, it's going to culminate in finishing off with the Trails of the Garden New Trail Park, which I believe I'm meant and J-Dog's never ridden in. Yeah, be a first timer. What are, what's the vibe? Lots of flow. I think on the yeah. Cannondale Sculpels, they're going to be lots of fun as well. Now sufficiently fueled, we hopped aboard the Sculpels, making our way out of town along the banks of the stunning Neisner Lagoon, heading for the famous Red Bridge and Phantom Pass climb. With the excitement of what lay ahead, it wasn't long before some Jason-related bike admin unfolded, which, as it turns out, is standard on trips of this nature. We 10 k's into the ride. I'm ready. How have you got a puncture ready? I have no idea. It does can, not bode well. I can tell you. It's Jack Russell on the bike, <laughs> and there's a skinny hint of a on the surface of there being a possible opportunity to shrub. The Jack Russell, the Jack Russell will do it. With our mechanical tax paid up front, the big test of the day would come in the form of the Seven Passes Road, which connects Neisner to George on a mix of gravel and tar roads, and passes through thick indigenous forests synonymous with the Garden Route region. Having tamed the Seven Passes, the terrain began to open up into easy-going farmlands. This was when we gained perspective of the sizable mountains that separate George from the Clan Karoo and that we would soon be riding through them. It just so happens that the Cross Cape route goes straight past the popular Garden Route Trail Park. A quick diversion into the park to sample some flow was well worth the effort and left us wanting more. The park offers 20 kilometers of hand-built bench-cut flow trail where the faster you go, the more technical it becomes. With day passes and annual permits available, there's something for everyone. With momentum on our side, we kept on pushing towards our next off-the-bike activity. Got a bit of a best hits of the seven passes, I reckon. Uh, most of them got some uh, nice gravel, gravel riding, and then Garden Road Trail Park. My first, uh, first time heading out there. Doug let me lead because it wasn't too technical. So, uh, the lengthy seat post made it a bit spicy. <laughs> yeah, everything, everything that you see in the trail park now is uh, you can up the grading by twofold because without a drop seat post, <laughs> it's pretty gnarly. Have a newfound respect for cross country riders. But we've been dialing in the setup. Yeah. And uh, speaking of setup, I think motorized setup is going to be a good little transition from here. We've got some quad bikes, bro. I'm always keen for quad bikes. I believe we can drift them. Hold the wide end. J-Dog throwing donuts and uh, me clipping trees, but this is really, it's a lot of fun, man. It gets the, the old adrenaline pumping, that's for sure. Um, I don't got shouted at for throwing a few donuts. So we don't generally love donuts. That is good fun. No corn on spray, puppy. We're going to pour No corn on spray. We had such a blast at the Wild X Adventures quad biking in the wilderness. A bit off of our route, but a welcome detour, and we can highly recommend it. It was then off to George and our overnight stay on Redberry Farm. As the day dawned, we realized that somehow the weather gods were on our side presenting picture-perfect conditions for another day filled with adventure. But first, coffee. 
So we got some local knowledge here on our side in George and we were told about this place, Millwick's, that apparently serves the best coffee in town. So we can confirm. It's warming the soul. It's good coffee. We've got some work to do. Those mountains up there, Montague Pass, lying in wait and my fitness level being at a minus three out of ten. Really looking forward to it. I can only expect it to hurt. It's going to hurt. <laughs> The Montague Pass lays claim to being the oldest unaltered pass still in use in South Africa. The 7.4 km narrow gravel road was completed in 1848 and built to replace the highly dangerous Craddock Pass. The pass climbs through indigenous forest, mountain Feinbos, and also passes the historic toll house. As we began our assault, we were enveloped by enormous mountains and awe-inspiring views. The pass is revered by cyclists around South Africa as a true test of strength and endurance, both of which seem to be lacking on our part after heavy winter grazing. Getting a bit of sunlight there. Nice on the open arms. Getting a bit fresh in the shade. Just being engulfed by these enormous mountains. We haven't gone very far. We've actually gone up a hell of a long way. I mean, look at those mountains. Yeah, come over that. Clocking, what's your Garmin saying? 1.3, 1,300 so far. And we're only like 13 k's in. It's been life changing. <laughs> Doug's found his legs. Reaching an altitude of 745 meters, this would be our biggest climb yet and not one to be taken lying down. Or was it? Tune in next week for episode 2 of the Cross Cape Adventure to see if Jason and Doug turn adversity into triumph.